All right, everybody. Hail and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings, and thank you so much again for joining me today. My name is Jesse, and I am the host here on this channel. And if things pertaining to Norse heathenry, Germanic paganism, or what is quite often just kind of lumped into this term of cult, also true here in modern times, if those sorts of things are are of uh, points of interest for you, I invite you to please subscribe down here uh, to the channel, and if you don't want to miss anything, click the bell notifications, and then you will be notified every time that I upload new content. Okay, everyone, so today's video is going to be on the subject of, uh, the title of the video is, Can We Actually Dishonor the Gods? Can we do things that bring dishonor to the gods? And the reason why I wanted to talk about this particular subject is because I think that at least in modern times, a lot of folks kind of get the term honor or dishonor. Um, maybe not necessarily confused, but the application of the word, um, as it was understood by our arch uh, ancestors, um, it's different then or now than it was then. And so I think that the term gets used or, or incorporated in ways that it maybe shouldn't. So I wanted to kind of just discuss a little bit about the way I see this term used. You know, can we actually do things that dishonor the gods? Um, I think this is a subject that gets thought about or at least brought into the minds of certain folks, maybe some newer heathens, some newbies perhaps, uh, because they come from a background where they think that the things that they do, the deeds that we do, are being sort of monitored or, um, you know, looked at closely by our sacred figures by our deities, by the gods and the goddesses, um, and sort of like judged by these sacred figures, that we are doing things that when things go bad, or when things go good, um, or whatever, that it is a, a direct reflection on what we have done in our particular lives, right? So there may be things that some folks out here think that, well, when things are going good, it's because I'm doing things that are pleasing to the gods, and that they are therefore looking down on us favorably, and that when things go awry, or when things are going amiss, that there is something that we have done to bring dishonor to the gods, and that we are therefore incurring their wrath, and that they are, you know, not focusing on us, they are not looking at us. We have done something to displease or dishonor the gods, and that that is why we are feeling, uh, you know, the ramifications of life, as it were. So. In this video, I wanted to just give you my view on things and, and kind of share with you what I think about that concept and see if it fits for you and then invite your um, insight or discussion down in the comments below. As always, at the end of this video, let us know what this particular subject means to you and how it fits in your worldview. All right, so first of all, when it comes to my practice of heathenry, when it comes to how I uh, you know, live as a heathen. Um, my view of the world is largely pulled from historical sources, and but I am not what you would call a, um, a, a a hardcore recon heathen or a hardcore reconstructionist heathen. I'm not a reconstructionist heathen to the to the to the extent that I discount any other sort of you know UPG stuff or whatever. Like there's a lot of what I do that is based on historical views of things, but I'm not like 100% on that side of the fence, and I'm also not all willy-nilly kind of neo-pagan thing. That's just me. How it fits for you, how you heathen, how you pagan, how you do your thing, that is entirely up to you. I am not here, nor is anyone else here. Um, I, I don't think anyone is a 100% end-all, be-all authority of how we should heathen. But for me, when I look at this particular subject, and when I hear certain people talk about this particular subject, I look back on you know, understanding what the concepts of things were for our arch-heathen uh, arch ancestors. So today, specifically, when we're talking about, you know, this whole honor, dishonor thing, um, I look back and I see, well, how did this term, or how did this word exist for our arch-heathen uh, ancestors, and how did they view the, the, this particular subject? So I've got some notes I'm going to be reading from, so as I, you know, look down, look back up, that's why. Um, so understanding the concepts of this word honor or, or dishonor, um, I need to go back and for me personally, kind of delve into what this term meant or what these, word meant, what these words meant for the ancestors at the time. 
Um, so honor is a term that is quite often used today, especially within heathenry, uh, or specifically Germanic heathenry. Um, and it may be misunderstood or misused, um, or, or rarely, you know, uh, properly applied or defined. Um, so the word nowadays is used to quite often describe someone that is uh, more or less synonymous with a, you know, you've got good reputation. If you're an honorable person, you've got a good reputation, you've done honorable things, you are well known and you are highly esteemed, that sort of thing. Um, but it goes deeper than that. That, 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 that word honor and, and what it meant for our arch heathen ancestors meant something more than just that. Yes, there are certain aspects of it that would just sort of be, you know, combined into the, uh, uh, the actual word or the actual thing, um, but the, the word itself goes deeper than that. So in Old English, which is a Germanic language, um, we find a word that is most commonly used for honor, and that word is or. And now if I'm mispronouncing it, it's because I don't study Old English. Um, it's going to be annotated somewhere up here on the screen. You'll see it. Um, but in Old Norse, it is er. And you'll also see that up here. Um, both of which are, again, um, Germanic languages. Um, it just kind of depends on the region and, and, and where things, uh, you know, separated linguistically and, and etymologically and all that sort of stuff. So those are the words that are quite often used to be synonymous with this word honor in those respective languages. Now, when we talk about these words, or or er, um, the or or the er of a person or an individual is essentially the building blocks of what Inangard, it's the building blocks of the Inangard of society, right? So in order for the Inangard to be strong and, be, and, to, and, to, and to function properly, you would have individuals who had good, uh, or, or had or, or er, as it were, and that is what helps strengthen and, and establish a strong Inangard, or inner yard talked about these words um, and these phrases and these things a bit on this channel in other videos um, so just you know you can you know search Midgard musings for Inangard and you know that sort of thing honor even I think I maybe even did a video about that within the last year or so check all that stuff out as and when you see fit um, but when someone acts in a sort of awful or honorable or airful or you know sort of manner or fashion it adds to their worth and that's the bottom line to this whole thing of what I wanted to talk about is your or, your er, your honor is determined by your worth. What are you worth? What value do you bring? What sort of things do you do that make you worthy, that make you worthful, that, that brings worth to your tribe, to your collective, to your group, um, that sort of thing. So without a sense of worth, without a sense of that being existent in an individual or in a collective or in the tribe or whatever, um, your place in society is not measured very highly. So therefore, without doing things that bring that worth to you, without doing things that give you that title, that, uh, that honor, that worth, um, you're not noticed, you're, you're, you're sort of on the bottom of the barrel, you're at the low end of the totem pole, you just don't have a whole lot of value to bring to anything. You're not worth anything or worth much as it were. So these are words and these are things that need to sort of be understood. These are concepts, these are worldviews that need to be understood in order for me as a heathen in my practices to understand can we even do anything that is a dishonor to the gods, right? Um, hence the, the, the subject of this video. So when one opens the question of you know, can we do things that quote unquote dishonor the gods? Again, it goes back to the overall view of society, right? So how do we interact with the gods? How do we interact with those figures, the sacred? Um, in my point of view, is an individual able to specifically do things that draw attention to the gods? Perhaps, yes, um, but really and truly the way the gods and us interact is through tribal conduct. You know what I mean? Our tribes interact with their tribe, um, or, or, or potentially can interact with their tribe. Therefore, 
what we do as an overall honor or dishonor to or with them is going to be a collective effort with our tribes, our kindreds, our, our, our thaves, or whatever it is, whatever your, you know, combined collective of individuals are um, that, that make up that group. Not an individual per se, but a collective. Um, so that's kind of where I see things um, go. Now, if the tribes of the sacred or the gods um, are not intertwined or woven with us, uh, you know, with us as, as, as humans existing in the profane space of Midgard, if those sacred elements, if those sacred forces are not invested enough to want to share weird or tie weird with us in the profane, then there's really nothing that we could experience in terms of honor or dishonor, right? Because we're not doing anything that's going to damage their luck. And therefore, their luck is not going to do anything that's going to damage ours. So it goes beyond what we would think of in terms of dealing with tribe to tribe, intertribal uh, relations or intertribal interactions uh, within the profane space because we're talking about the sacred, right? These uh, figures exist in a, in a time and space that transcends and goes beyond what we understand as mortal in our own profane uh, existence. However, are there things that we can do that, um, you know, make them notice us, that make them recognize the fact that these are things that we appreciate them, we meaning them, in, in, their, in their space, and that they would then not impart their own luck um, or, or share with their luck in with ours, and that we would then therefore continue that cycle, that reciprocal cycle, that gifting cycle that we often talk about so much within heathenry, um, through our bloats and through our, you know, various ritual uh, happenings that tie those threads and strengthen those threads that give us that sense of strong weird that we're tying, you know. So, um, how we um, do things, how we exist, how we perform our, our actions, things that are good, things that are, that are beneficial to us, um, as, a, as a tribe, as a whole, um, and then how we do things that are potentially maybe harmful or, or damaging to the luck overall. H how they affect the luck of our tribe, the things that we do that are going to overall affect the luck uh, of the collective. Um, those are all things that, that, that should be considered, right? Um, but where do the gods necessarily fit into this? We're talking about things that um, really exist and, and, and function and, and that we can tangibly see or feel with one another you know so whether it be the individuals within our tribes or kindreds or whether it be with other tribes that we interact with or other groups that we interact with you know these are things that exist for us within the profane not so much with the gods now my own opinion and again this is open for discussion so everybody that's watching please comment down below what you think but my own opinion is that we as individuals, we that exist within the profane, we should be more concerned and we should be more focused on doing things and living ways and, and, and behaving ourselves and, and bringing worth um, that are going to affect our folk, the, the people that we share and tie weird with uh, in our own tribes or collectives, whatever you call it, whether it be tribe, kindred, whatever, fade, you know, whatever your a particular approach to heathenry is. These are the things that we should be focused on. Don't necessarily worry so much about the fact that the gods are unhappy or the gods are displeased. If things are going awry, if things are not working out so well within your tribes or your lives, it's probably and most likely due to the fact that there are things about your life and the things about yourselves that exist within here and now, not necessarily the sacred space, but the profane space, that are just, that need to be corrected, that need to be addressed, and that need to be worked on, right? Um, because those are the things that affect um, and, and that get added to the well, right? So it becomes Orlog, our descendants can draw from that luck. Um, so these are the things that we can actually control in the Verdandi, in the now, that shape school, that shape the things that will be or that could be or that poten potentially should be. Those are the things that we have control over now. So we should I think focus more on that 
than worrying about, oh no, what did I do today that made Odin angry or that made Freya angry or that made Frigg or Thor or Tyr or Baldur or whatever these other figures that we hold in such high esteem in our own pagan practices so you know, valuably. Do we care about the fact that these figures are looking down upon us in a judgmental state? I don't particularly look at it that way. And the things that happen to me in my daily lives, I don't think, well, I must have incurred the wrath of Odin and now he's punishing me because I dishonored him in some sort of way. It's not so much that to me as it is, what am I doing that's that's affecting the overall, uh, how am I feeding the well? How am I, you know, what, what sort of value am I bringing? What sort of worth am I bringing to my Inangar, to my hearth, to my extended family, my kith, right? My, uh, my tribe, all that sort of thing. How am I doing? What am I doing that's going to affect or how is it going to affect those individuals? So that's kind of where I sit on this whole subject and I'm interested to hear what you guys and gals have to say about it. So please head down into the comment section. Let me know what it is you think about this video and uh, share what it is that you have to say. I'm anxious to hear what you all think about it. So thank you all so much for watching today's video. That's a wrap. Um, there will be some really cool things coming out next week. I've got a lot of cool content lined up. I've got a couple collaborations uh, lined up. Of course, we've got the Our Heathen Hearts um, discussion with Varg and Sol from the band Valuspa over there in Norway. Really fo looking forward to that discussion. I've got another uh, sort of thing behind the scenes that I've been working on with another friend of mine, sort of collaboration video that's going to be filmed sometime next weekend. Um, I know I haven't been doing a whole lot with the, uh, or anything really this past week or so with the Hall Mall discussion things, but that's because I've just been really busy uh, with work and all the other kinds of stuff. So hopefully that'll resume um, in some sort of cadence here soon. But anyways, that's today's video. Thank you guys for sticking around and watching this. I hope you guys like it. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and share it around. And if you don't want to miss anything, make sure that you subscribe, click the bell notifications. You know the drill. Head down into the description to see all the ways that you can support Midgard Musings in the link tree link that's posted right at the top of the description area. Thank you all so much for watching this video today. Hail, and I will see you all in the next one.